What I have always gleaned from the books that, that I've read of yours, and I, I think if, if we could just get everyone to, to endorse this viewpoint, is that the dignity of life that comes through through work and, yeah. and the satisfaction that you get uh, through earning a living and succeeding and, and the happiness that really can only come from something like that. And I think we lose sight of that a lot. Yeah, for sure. Can you do that? Back to Andrew. Can you do that at home, playing around on your computer and you know taking a bathroom break every five minutes and screwing off and not really doing anything at home? Or do you need to come in <laughs> to be happy and do a, get a real job? Well, different Sit strokes. Charming <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> different strokes. But one of the things that we do see, because I study the science of Can happiness. Can remote work do it? No. I mean, I've been teaching this. I uh, you know, I've been teaching, uh, you know, the science of happiness based on the neuroscience and social science of happiness, which is an exploding field for the last four years really? at Harvard. Yeah. How and, come no one's happy? Yeah. <laughs> well, some people are. No, I am. It's just, uh, it, and, and one of the things that you find very clearly is that the, the, the secret of happiness is love. It's relationships with people. And, and there's this neurophysiology to that that's very interesting. There's a, a hormone called oxytocin in the human mm -hmm. brain that comes from eye contact and touch, and you get almost none of it virtually. There's just a trickle of that that comes along. And so the reason yeah. that people will binge social media is because they're lonely, because they have a deficit of this oxytocin hormone. So they go online and they, they try to get contact. That's like getting all of your calories right. from burgers and fries. You'll get too many calories, not enough nutrients. You'll get less and less and less healthy. And that's what happens when all your time is on Zoom or social media and so right. forth and so on. We need more human contact how than we, we're getting. How do you reduce the, the sort of human nature of, of scrolling? Yeah. Doom scrolling, whatever scrolling you want to describe it as. But I find myself, unfortunately, and I like to think I'm cognizant of the yeah. problem. You know, I even have timers on it. So, I'm, you know, after 15 minutes, it's supposed to stop me from doing it. Right. And then I say... You know, That's uh, weird. I run give, me, give me temporary extra time, yeah. and I'm doing it to myself. It's not, I'm like I'm treating myself like a child. Yeah, I look at what do Twitter, do? Drudge, and CBS Sports, and I'm done. What yeah. are you looking at? Yeah, what you have? <laughs> but how much time on Twitter? What, uh, I hate Twitter. Yeah, not, but not too much, much, right? More than you want, probably. I so, yeah, not but, as much as as people think. I yeah. Think. Well, it's a, it's a problem because there's a, a different set of right. circuits in the brain. But so how they, would you undo that? Well, the dopamine mm -hmm. circuits are uh, they're, they're behind all addiction. There's a very nice book out um, by Anna Lemke at Stanford called Dopamine Nation. It talks right. about how almost everything that we do compulsively has this dopamine problem behind it. That's a neurotransmitter of mm -hmm. anticipation right. of reward. Pleasure. You can get it from food. You can get it from drugs. You can get it from pornography. You can get mm -hmm. it from Twitter. Right. You can get it from all of these particular things. And so you have to intervene. I don't think by, you get it from Twitter much. You can. You do. Oh. You get a lot of it from Twitter, and that's it's actually why social media dopamine. is so addictive. Right. So a couple of different things to do. The, the timers are okay. You need to have other people hold you accountable, number one. Number two, you have to have spaces in your life where you actually don't have your devices. You go some like the bathroom. Dinner don't table. take your devices to the bathroom. Number, the best place for the iPhone. <laughs> and the, number three is to turn your screen to black and white. Right. Because that actually will stimulate less dopamine when you're using it. It'll be less. You'll you do be less addicted to the to the apps that you're using. And so these things actually help a lot. But you also have to be conscious of the decisions that you're trying to make. And at least once a year. You should take probably at least a month away from all of these apps. Delete them all <coughs> off your phone. That's a really you need good a, idea. You need a fast is what it comes down to because that will reset a lot of these dopamine. Get rid of that right. and just put on your Apple new thing and just sit there for a month. And that will that'll <laughs> cure you of all your... Uh, of, that could lead to any new problems, right? Yeah, no, that'll, that'll be great. I, I realize you remind me a little bit of Ted Lasso. You have a very positive mental attitude. Yeah. How hard do you have to work at that? Well, part of it is that one of the, one of the great secrets to happiness is teaching happiness for a couple of different reasons. Number one is I'm reminding myself of all the happiness hygiene that comes from the science constantly. You know, you, you, you know, there's this old teaching method about how to learn something very quickly. You teach it to another person. That's called the plastic platypus method, believe it or not. It's because in mm. these old re research, they used to have people teach something to literally a plastic platypus. It doesn't matter. It could be a rubber ducky or a bowling ball. But if you teach something, you explain something, you get it forever. My secret to happiness is teaching happiness. That's the reason that what I do all day is I talk to executives and you know, people in leadership positions, not so they can be happier, but they can be happiness teachers in their work. Everybody watching, look, this is the best show for business. Uh, every you know, good CEO is watching the show right now. If they start thinking of themselves as happiness teachers, learning about the happiness science, trying to embed it in the work that they do every day, they will get happier. Their marriages will be better. Their relationships with their kids will be better. Their work-life balance will be better. Like magic. 
it's because they're explaining these ideas to All us. All right, who's the best patient you ever had, the best who's, student you ever had? And who's so my, I, I have these phenomenal students at Harvard, these MBAs. I have 180 MBAs with a few hundred on the waiting list, and there's a secret Zoom link they think I don't know about to the class. <laughs> and, and my students are great because they're in their second semester of their last year. They're getting ready to go out in the workforce, and these 180 come into my class because they realize that something is actually missing from their lives. They're really good at learning about business. They're not very good at managing themselves with respect to the happiness that they want. Look, the currency of the real startup is the enterprise of your life. You know, you're Andrew Inc., that's you. I mean, the whole startup is you. The currency of your life is love and happiness. If you can't manage that, it's like you've got the worst possible P&L situation in a company you're taking over. So that's what I teach them, business right. principles. He really does have an Andrew Inc. I'm surprised that you were, that's amazing that what, you knew that. <laughs>